Okay, it's been like two weeks. I don't remember all the, the case details, but hey, I think we know enough, and I'm pretty sure we know the um, culprit, quote unquote. It seems pretty simple. It's just, I wonder how some of the clues are going to fit into place here. Asani has already pointed out a couple things to me that I find interesting. Um, we'll see if that's how it plays out. So, let's get going. <clears throat> I kind of forget how to play this almost. Being the last one left, I stepped into the elevator. And the door slid shut. This time, the clunking was loud enough to hurt my ears, and the dread began to consume me once again. I can't imagine ever getting used to the mental pressure that comes with preparing for an execution. In that dusky darkness, nobody said a word. We just stood there, silent and still. After an immeasurable period of time, the doors opened without warning. The dazzling light penetrated every depth of my eyes. But it wasn't the illuminating light of hope. It was the blinding light of despair. I can't uh, wait! I can't wait! Jesus Christ, Monokuma, this room is too bright and entirely too gay. What the hell? <laughs> uh, ah, I've been waiting for this. It feels like it's been forever since we got together like this. The time for pointless jokes and jabs is past. Oh, I should probably, uh, yeah. Thrills, chills, kills! Let's get on with the show! Yay! And so the curtain opened for the fifth time. Deadly judgment. <laughs> Uh, no, no need. Um, everything should be set already. But I'll look just in case. I really focus. On. I do. I should have enough points for something else. Do they have any others I'm not using? Well, okay. I've just got enough for everything. Sweet. Lock on the two statements at once. Couldn't this lock on the more than one thing at once before? Okay, I, whatever. Okay, let's look over stuff real quick. Yes, indeed, that help menu is very useful. I never did spend my coins. That's okay. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to find the victims I single time I don't have. Uh, st stuck in the head with a pipe, covered with other wounds, several days old, body analysis, upper half of the body, upper half was soaking wet while the bottom half remained dry, fake nails, that's given the right hand, practicing the dead body, I forget what that was from, but whatever, I'll figure it out, sprinklers, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, is uh, the possible to change if we think the body had been in the garden before, it would have gotten wet, right? Which it was not. When the body was found, uh, I wake in the morning and I was at 7.30, Makoto and away from Makoto because I was in the gym and took out a head of Tucko's body, at the crime scene, the same one that, 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 what's his face had? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh, tarp. It went filthy with mutton grind. It was completely clean and dry. Uh, chicken coop. Mm -hmm. It went from five to four chickens. Uh, there was no corpse in the garden just after nighttime last night. Second, we seen the murder took place sometime after that. They were in the gym the entire night. None of them were alone at any point because they were fucking with the Monokuma bot by before the explosion. Uh, Muk Mukuro Ikusaba's profile. The ultimate soldier. Close with the military. Blah, blah, blah. It was a, a, a tattoo. So she's. This person's a member of uh, Fenrir. Well, Akuma's account apparently killing game began with 16 persons. gloves to hide something she doesn't want anyone to see. Woodblock key. Uh, that was the locker found in Kyoko's room. It looks like it's actually one of the keys of the dojo. Titanium arrows. You whack somebody over the head with them. Uh, bloody duct tape. Mm -hmm. Kyoko's account. He's not coming to secret tool, which grants six. Okie dokie. That'll have to do. <clears throat> Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. 
So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out oh, who yeah, that's done right. it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay, well, I'll leave the rest up to you. Well then, let's discuss the specifics of the victim. Sorry, trying to fix my earpiece. First, we need to clarify who exactly the unidentified victim is. It's Kyoko. There's no other explanation. Uh... But Kyoko's standing right there. <sighs> Hero. <sighs> no! That's a ghost! Uh... It's okay, Kyoko. But she has legs and stuff. Well, ghosts could have legs, but you got some legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's just because she's like the latest evolution in ghost technology. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too. It was so stupid that even Toko didn't stutter. There's a limit to how much ridiculousness I can tolerate. That's like the nicest thing you've said about Hero. Um, okay. So I just have to prove that the corpse isn't Kyoko, right? <laughs> what a hard task. Then let's compare Kyoko's traits to the traits of the dead body. Uh, are we... Are we... Are we seriously entertaining this? I mean, sure, I suppose it's a, there's a chance that... You know, our Kyoko is a fake, but I mean, uh, I why? Oh, okay. Let's just let's just go with it. Her traits? Yeah, you know, like the two in front of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? One important trait Kyoko has that proves the body doesn't belong to her. Uh, Kyoko's gloves. I got it. Yeah. I'm talking about her gloves. They'll give us some insight into the mystery. I'm sure of it. Are we... Are we we're, we're, we're seriously going with this. Okay. In that case, I think it would be helpful if someone explained why she actually wears those gloves. And would you happen to know the answer? Nope, that's why we're curious. In fact, Monokuma told me. Apparently you have scars on your hands you don't want anyone to see. Oh! You know, now that I think about it, the corpse wasn't wearing any gloves, right? They probably just got burnt up in the explosion. I'm not convinced. The ghost is just trying to fool us all. You're not gonna... Are they gonna ask why wouldn't you wear gloves because of fake nails? There's no way the corpse was Kyoko. I can't prove why. We're gonna be stuck here in the case moment before. Oh my god, we are seriously entertaining this. Don't have any choice but to... Oh boy. Oh, okay. Okay, I tapped here on the right here. That I forget the controls. Let's see. Aim silencer. Right. Kyoko, there is just a ghost. Impossible. Okay, then prove it. Prove she's not a ghost! Oh my god. The dead body wasn't wearing gloves! They got burnt up in the explosion! Then she was wearing gloves before the explosion? Well, yeah! She must have been wearing gloves! Okay, that yeah, that's... is absolutely Kyoko! Okay, yeah, that's, that's the fake nails. This entire discussion is idiotic. It's, it, I, it's, I imagine it's the fake nails. Because you, you're not gonna wear fucking gloves with nails. I know that body is a Kyoko's, and I know I can prove it. This is stupid! I cannot believe we're entertaining this! Like... <laughs> what? That Kyoko there... Okay, then prove it! The dead body wasn't wearing gloves! They got burnt up in the explosion! Then she was wearing gloves before the explosion? Well, yeah! She must have been wearing... No, that's wrong! Thank you. 
No. There's no way the corpse was wearing gloves. Whoever it was, they were wearing fake nails, remember? I imagine trying to wear gloves over nails like that would have been a pretty big pain. Besides, Kyoko wears gloves to hide her hands, right? It'd be pretty weird for someone who's self-conscious about their hands to wear fake nails, don't you think? Yeah. Jeez, man, you don't know women, huh? They're complicated like that. Uh... If anyone doesn't know women, it's you. You tell them. Well, Kyoko, any thoughts? <laughs> You're all retarded, that's my thought. These gloves were custom made to the size of my hands to make sure they don't interfere with my daily life. If I wore fake nails, the gloves wouldn't fit properly. I cannot believe we're actually having to go through this. Then that's that. The dead body doesn't belong to Kyoko. <laughs> Hero, you're fired. Just never talk again. <laughs> Which should have been obvious since she's standing right here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miyaku. <laughs> okay, so then. Who's the real victim? First, we need to figure that out. He said... <laughs> That's the first thing I said. <laughs> You're the one who's been dragging us around in circles. <laughs> he just might smack the shit out of him at this rate. For anything, we have to identify the victim. Everything starts from there. Sprinkler exploded by... Uh, oh, shit. They're not playing around this time. The second multi multiple trace in a row. If Kyoko really is still alive, then who died? There's got to be some way to figure it out. I don't think so. The face was scorched beyond recognition, and there wasn't any description in the Monokuma file. Well, if we can't identify the body, then there's nothing else we can do, right? Uh. Wait a minute. And the one thing I could tell us was on the victim's own body. If Kyoko really is still alive, then who died? Okay. I guess it's, it's gotta be the tattoo, I imagine. Figure it out. I don't think so. The face was scorched beyond recognition. Uh -huh. And there wasn't any I description for the of the Monokuma one. file. Well, if we can't identify the body... No, that's wrong! Yeah. Yep, exactly. There was one clue left behind that we can use to identify the body. What? For real? Well, you can stop partying. You're lying. You'll die a cruel and unusual death. Jesus Christ, where'd that come from? Cruel and unusual death? This I gotta see. I'll become a ghost and haunt you. She's just being stupid. Ignore them, Makoto. Tell us what you're talking about. The key to figuring out who it was is the tattoo on the back of her hand. Oh, yeah. The design's pretty strange, huh? Is this a dog? It's a doggo, a puppers. Take your pick. Her master must have made her get it to be like, you're my bitch. Jesus. Fuck. <laughs> what the hell? Toko. Toko, I, wor I, I worry about it. Seriously? They really did something that humiliating? Uh. No, that's not it. The identity of the victim is hidden within that tattoo. Even Byakuya is partying. Oh, really? We give that tattoo to the other information we had. The victim's identity should become clear. Mm -hmm. Um. Is that? Yeah, yeah. I got it! The Fenrir Mercenary Corps. That's the name of the military group Mukuro Ikusaba belonged to. Okay, so... To show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Fenrir? The image that represents Fenrir is... Doggo! D-O-G-G-O, -G -G -O. what the hell? Oh. 
I really have to spell this. Now I understand. It's not a wolf, it's a doggo. The representation of Fenrir is a wolf. Oh, what the hell? I lost stream. Shit. Hang on, guys. I'll get on with the recording here in a bit. Okay, just seconds. Give it just a sec, guys. Sorry. Gonna wait for a sec. He's restarting his browser. D O G G O. I know, I know it's an old meme, but I, I'd lose it if the tattoo on the back of the hand was just dog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think he's about ready. Okie dokie, let's get on with this. Fenrir, the wolf of Ragnarok. It's from Norse mythology. A huge world-ending wolf beast. Wow, no stutter. He's the child of oh, the go. god Loki. And a female giant. How'd that happen? How's a dude fuck a giant and you get a wolf? Man, Norse mythology's weird. Man, after all this time, we finally got a glimpse of the literary all-star. A wolf? Tattoo. Then that means... Exactly. The body we found had a tattoo of a wolf. Which means that person must have once belonged to Fenrir. So it must have been Mukuro. What? Or... Possibly somebody just got a tattoo stitched on. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Not stitched Isn't on, you know what I mean. Is she the one that was behind this whole thing? <laughs> you sound surprised, but you're absolutely right. Well, hello, Monokuma. You actually piped up for once. Yes, indeed. <laughs> the trial this time is to solve the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Or is it? Don't trust you, Bear. What? Are you saying the mastermind is dead? And now we have to have a cool ass trial? No. It means we were wrong in thinking that Mukuro was the mastermind at all. But I mean, being the ultimate despair seems like a pretty mastermindy title to me. It does. Maybe we shouldn't have been thinking of her as the ultimate despair in the first place. After all, looking at her profile, I didn't see anything that would fit such a description. All it said was that she was the ultimate soldier. Yeah, that is true. I thought that was kind of weird. So, Kyoko, what do you know about that? You're the one that called her the ultimate despair. If I remember correctly, that other information came from... Yeah. Kyoko, that's what you told Makoto, right? I just said that. So that means... Kyoko got it wrong? Then... who was she? Who was Mukuro Ikusaba? She's been gone this whole time? And when she finally turns up, she gets killed. Usually when there's a scene where an important character dies, it has a lot more detail. So you're saying she wasn't an important character? Which would mean she was the same as us. Just another participant. Why didn't you say that? Because that might be true. Well, then who's the real mastermind? It must have been the Hope's Peak Academy headmaster after all. No, the Headmaster has nothing to do with it. But how can we trust that? We already know your information about Mukuro was wrong. Wrong. My information was not wrong. Okay, okay! 
We're in the middle of a trial right now. Figuring out who killed Mukuro is first and foremost. You can stop partying. Please limit all future prattle, chatter, and chit chat as much as possible. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. Fine. Uncovering the identity of the mastermind will have to wait. But remember this. No matter what happens, we will find out who you really are. I stake my family name on it. I have officially decided to completely ignore all such attempts at provocation. Now then, just so nobody's confused, let me state this one more time for the record. The reason we're having a class trial is because a murder <laughs> among the students has taken place. Oh, when the faces shake like that, it, it makes me giggle. Hammer that point straight into your big old brains! What you're saying is that both the victim and the culprit are part of the student body? Then... one of us killed Mukuro? Wait, no! There's a chance that there's some mystery 17th person who's been hiding all along! <laughs> You know, just because you're here, I want to dismiss it out of hand, but you know what? Fuck, man. Rules don't matter anymore. Fuck, there could be. Probably not. There could be. Or at least, you know, probably not a 17th student. But, you know, I don't know. Nope. There are only 16 students in total that have been taking part in these events. You, only, you told us 15 before, though, didn't you? So you're clearly willing to lie. Seriously? Then one of us killed Mukuro? Who did it? Who's the killer this time? Get a hold of yourself. We've already narrowed down the list of possible suspects. Huh? Well, yeah, I mean, based on everything that's happened, there, there would only be two in my mind, at least of us six. I'm sure you realize who I'm talking about, right, Makoto? Who the evidence points to? This is what we know, there can only be two suspects. Makoto and Kyoko. Toko and just side check. I got it! You've narrowed it down to... Kyoko and me, right? Why do you say that? Allow me to explain. Well, this isn't too hard to figure out. But... Just after nighttime last night, I went to the garden. So I can confirm... Hang on, I'm catching up on text. that at that okay. point, there was no dead body there. So, the murder must have taken place after I left the garden. Now, of course, this is just, you know, hearsay, but... However, Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I were in the gym the entire time. You could have killed him before we went to the gym, but I don't think that's the case anyway. Just saying. Possible. The gym? That's right. The four of us were there trying to dismantle Monokuma. Stupid bear. Which is... The whole time, we were very careful not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. I see what you're saying, Hassani. No, I'm not going to say it to you folks. But the problem is, if we do that, um, that's going to end tragically for everyone except one. Uh, hmm. But we'll see how this goes. All of which is to say, I mean, the four of us all have alibis. The only ones without alibis. I, I, I'm pretty sure you're on the right track, or like super close. But, but I mean, <clears throat> are me and Makoto. That's why you're able to narrow down the list of suspects. Exactly so. so the only suspects now are me and Kyoko. Damn it. I can't let the stand. Somehow I have to clear my name. Um, I have something I'd like to say regarding the whole alibi thing. Uh oh, you better cough it up, son. <clears throat> it's reading, sorry. My internet keeps crapping out, sorry. Are you thinking of raising an objection? Well, shouldn't we be a little forthcoming with that? But then, well, okay, I can see why you wouldn't want to be forthcoming with that. Well, before that, 
I just want to try and get a better idea of what time the murder took place. Man, my internet is really shit. I'm sorry for the crap stream quality. Doing that might reveal some kind of clue. Whatever you want, somebody go ahead and help him out. Me and Byakuya can both confirm that the body wasn't in the garden at... Well, it was after nighttime for sure. I'd say it must have been around 10 o'clock. So the murder must have happened after 10 p.m. Then I guess we can say the time frame for the murder was between then and when we found the body? Oh, but what time did we find the body? Nine. The one who saw the body first was Toko, right? And she went to go get the pickaxe. What time was the body discovered? I got it! The body must have been discovered at 9 a.m., since that's when Toko went to get the pickaxe. But if we do that... Uh... Talking to Hisami again. Uh, oh jeez, the internet is completely crapping out. Oh dear. I don't... I, mean, I see what you're saying, but I don't know how that's going to work. But I guess we'll just roll with it. Now then, Toko, what time is it? Well, when we left the gym, it was just before 9 o'clock. So it's probably 9 on the dot now. Okay, go get the pickaxe and be back here by 9.01. He's right. It had to be around then. So we can be totally sure the murder happened sometime between 10 at night and 9 in the morning. <laughs> I mean, not in this... Talking to his honey, his honey again. Not necessarily, but... Yeah, yeah, I'm sure we'll get a chance. We'll see what happens. For me, <coughs> I was already asleep before nighttime hit. So I don't have an alibi after 10 o'clock. But I'm sure I met up with everyone else before 9 this morning. I met up with Aoi, at least. We ran into each other in the dining hall, right? That was around... Oh, yeah! 7.30. Right around 7.30. I remember checking right before I went in, so I'm totally sure about it. Which means from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., you don't have an alibi. Remember what happened between 10 p.m. and 9 a.m.? I don't have an alibi from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. Well, the, the way we prove that is the, the sprinklers. Okay, it looks like the game has begun. I can't provide an alibi for that period. I just have to prove the murder didn't happen during the time I don't have an alibi. That's that. This one's really simple. Yeah, I have to make it clear when the body ended up in the garden. Yeah, yeah spring it's gotta be a sprinklers. We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between ten o'clock at night and nine o'clock in the morning. Yep, and Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7.30. That's more than enough time to commit murder, I should think. So, Makoto, if you have any objections, now would be the time. Switching do I refute the 7.30 with the sprinklers? Yeah. Okay, it has to be the 7.30 one. Okay. We established a time for it took place somewhere between Whoopsie. 10 and 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep. And Makoto doesn't have... Yeah, from 10 o'clock... To 7.30. Wait, what? Uh, something weird. Shoot. Wait, what? We've established a time frame for the murder. Uh. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night. Well, okay, it's not refuting. And 9 o'clock in the morning. Um. Yep. And Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7.30. That's more than enough time to commit murder, I should think. So, Makoto, Is if you can... have any objections, uh, okay. now would be the time. I would think I would have had to pick 7.30, because that's when the sprinklers turn on, but okay. We've established a All time right, I'll, I'll go with what you said. Murder. It took place somewhere between... No, that's wrong! Yeah, okay. Actually, the murder couldn't have happened anywhere near 10 o'clock. 
It had to have taken place way later. Oh, I, I see how that's being done. Okay, I was, I was being stupid. I was being stupid. And what makes you say that? Because of the sprinklers in the garden. The sprinklers are set to go off right at 7.30 every morning, right? Yeah, just, just in the morning, not, uh, not, uh, yeah. So if the body had been in the garden before 7.30, then it should have been completely soaked. Oh, hold on. I remember this part perfectly. The body was wet. Dripping wet, in fact. Sorry, Toko, but you're wrong. I'm wrong? How? Wait, you don't remember perfect- What the hell? Are you saying only the mouth down south was wet? What? How dare you spew such indecent words? What is wrong with you? <laughs> uh, but you see, you see why I, I thought why I thought that was the the, the thing to pick. But yeah, I, I, that, that was a little unclear on that one. But seriously, Togo, what the fuck? No, I'm saying that the body was wet, but not because of the sprinklers. What do you mean? By denying the sprinkler, are you trying to deny my entire existence? I hate everybody I live with. <laughs> Man, you're totally wacko. If you really think it wasn't the sprinkler, you'd better tell us why. Uh, I need to prove that it wasn't the sprinklers that got the body wet. Uh, re really? Really? Uh, all I do is hit Toka with certain evidence, and I should do. Look at the body itself. I should make it clear. Oh, jeez, I had to do this. Fuck me. No, no, no. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Um. Uh, okay, lock on, reload, fire. Lock on, reload, fire. Lock on, reload, fire. I admit nothing. I hate you. No, no, no! I don't know anything. Hold on. Oh, I see what it means by at a time. I admit nothing. I hate you. No, no. It means like so many lock-ons at. Oh my god. No. I'm I'm shit. How can you say it wasn't the fish should prove it? <laughs> I thought I was fucking up the tempo, but it, it it took it. So okay. Just remember what the body was like after the explosion, and you'll see why it wasn't the sprinklers. The top half of the body was wet, yes, but the bottom half was completely dry. If the sprinklers got the body wet, shouldn't the whole body have been wet? So they only got the top wet? The bottom was completely dry? What a brutal maniac! I'm so sick of her. <laughs> Let's just move on. The reason only the top half was wet was because... We dumped water on it, Aria. <laughs> it's on fire. While the body was still on fire, <laughs> I doused it with water. But only the part on fire, the top half. I like how Byakuya was just standing there going, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, then I guess the sprinklers really didn't do it. So if the sprinklers didn't get the body wet, then the murder must have taken place. Sometime after the sprinklers turned on at 7.30 in the morning. Yeah. Which means she must have been killed sometime between then and when the body was discovered at 9. Or... But Makoto's alibi was only missing from 10 o'clock last night to 7.30 this morning, right? So there's no way Makoto could have done it. I guess you had an alibi after all. Good for you. Good for you. Good for me. Yep, the burning corpse, all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In which case, the only one left without an alibi is Kyoko. Uh oh, gotta cough up something. Kyoko's the only one without an alibi. 
which would mean that Mokuro's killer is... No, I refuse to believe it. I, I, I do believe it, but is it, is it actually the truth? Kyoka murdered someone? That's... I'd just like to say one thing. Oh, now now's a good time for that, probably. And yeah, of, of course, the, the tarp. I mean, everybody forgets all the goddamn evidence, I swear. That's the first thing I thought of, but wait, you could have covered it up. And then there was a dirty tarp, you know. If you vote for me, and I die here, the mystery of this school will stay hidden forever. Oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well? I mean... So, what do you what do you propose we do here? Um, so, yeah. Which is why I can't let that happen. Um, well... <laughs> so are you saying you're not the culprit? Of course I'm not. I have no reason to kill anyone. Well, I mean, not necessarily, but... This is a trap the Mastermind has laid for us. Well, that's pretty clear. But, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean he didn't kill somebody, but... A trap? <laughs> We're this far into the game, and now you decide to blame me? Oh, you Trixie Bear. Stop wasting time! Stop wasting energy! You really think your little trick is gonna work? Probably. Shut up, you! <laughs> you got it, boss! Shutting up now! Anyway... Really? Is that easy? Kyoko, you wow. actually did have a reason to kill her. Huh? She did? She thought Mukuro was the ultimate despair. In other words, the mastermind behind everything. I mean, yeah, that, that's a motive. So she killed her to try and put a stop to all this. Isn't that right, Kyoko? But you made one catastrophic mistake. Mukuro wasn't the mastermind at all. And as a result, we were forced into another trial. Something I'm sure you weren't at all expecting. So that was her motive? It's a motive. If she had a motive, and no alibi, well then, I think it's pretty clear Kyoko's gotta be the culprit. Oh, well, hang on here. Let's, let's talk about those. I'm not the only one without an alibi. Makoto's explanation is still insufficient. Oh my god! You're willing to throw me under the bus! <laughs> right under the damn bus! Huh? Jesus Christ! What the hell? I mean, I get it, but what the hell? The sprinklers didn't get the body wet, but that doesn't mean the murder happened when he said it did. <laughs> Let's dive under the bus anyway. <laughs> Man, fucking under the bus. Not just under, like, they just threw me under the bus. She threw me under the bus, killed the bus driver, Threw him out on top of me, and then she ran me over with the bus, and then backed over the bus, uh, backed over me with the bus, and then did sick burnouts on me with the bus. And then she took took an oily rag, and she set it on fire. She put it in the in the gas tank, ran away, and I blew up with the bus. Yeah. Uh. What are you? Because you see. There is a way the body could have avoided getting wet. Ooh, man, I'm starting to hate you. I mean, I, 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 I don't get me wrong. I understand what she's doing here. And I shouldn't hate, but goddamn, I do hate right now. It's, she, she, uh, it's, what the, what the fuck you gonna toss me under the bus? Interesting. I'm listening. All it would take is covering the body with a certain something to keep it from getting wet. You're <laughs> the living protagonist. Certainly something at the scene when she's covered the body could have been. No, don't expose yourself! What the hell are you doing? <laughs> oh yeah, it was that tarp I laid out. Oh shit. Uh I got it. God damn it. You're talking Why are we about doing this? Tarp, aren't you? You catch on quick. You're right. All you'd have to do is cover the body with the tarp. And that'd take care of the water. I'm gonna Spartan kick you off a building once we're out of here. If we get out of here. In fact, that's exactly what the killer did. 
And you would know, wouldn't you? Because you're the killer! The dirt pattern on the tarp can attest to that. Only one side of the tarp got dirty, because that's the side that got covered in water. The side that faced down over the body, meanwhile, kept perfectly clean. And why was it perfectly clean? Shouldn't there have been blood? This proves that the killer used the tarp to keep the body from getting soaked. I, I feel like my point is valid here. There should be blood on that tarp. But why would they go to all that effort just to keep the body from getting wet? Really, Byakuya? I'd expect Hiro or Aoi to, to ask that question, but really? So that we could throw off the time about the sprinklers. Or we could use the sprinklers as... And yeah, you're, you're right, man. Most likely so they could cloud the issue of when the murder actually took place. I can't believe you had to ask that, Byakuya. That's... Really? You're all idiots and I hate you all. Except for... Uh, oh, yeah, I like Chloe. That's my girl. In other words, to create an excuse exactly like the one Makoto just gave us. I would kill Kusina. Yeah, what a bitch. Why does she want to make me look like the killer? Oh, I can't think about that. Dude, you're trying to you're trying to be Mr. Nice, and I go, I don't think she could have done it. And she's like, Makoto totally did it. What the fuck? Again, for the like fifth time or whatever, I understand what's going on. I've seen this too many times before with her. But fucking hell! This is a little much. <laughs> Hero stupidity is pretty infectious. <laughs> that tarp. It was used the way Kyoko said. Tarp must have touched the bite right. I just said this. The body. Wait. Something's not right. Yeah, I, I hadn't considered that, that, that before until we got to this, this trial. I, I thought about it. I saw your text and like, yeah, it kind of confirms it, doesn't it? And what might that be? There's no blood on the inside, idiot. I can't worry about Kyoko's motivations. If I don't do something, everyone's going to think I'm the killer. So yeah, we gotta fight Kyoko. Let's fight. Da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na. I have to repeat what Kyoko said. <laughs> Jesus. Body before the explosion, I imagine, but we'll see. By covering the body with the tarp, the killer prevented it from getting wet. Uh-huh. So the reason the tarp was only dirty on one side is because the sprinkler got that side wet. But the underside of the tarp, it was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected from the water. Since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty. I'm going to assume it's the third one. When the blood on the body hadn't dried yet. Yakuza even warned us not to touch it to avoid getting any blood on us. I imagine it's the third one. By covering the body with the tar, the killer prevented it from getting wet. So the reason the tarp was only dirty on one side is because the sprinkler got that side wet. But the underside of the tarp, it was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected yeah, that's from what I was the thinking. water. Since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty. Fuck it, stupid thing. Fuck. Uh, okay, okay, it's fine. By covering the body with the tarp, no, no, like the a big deal, is it? it from so the reason the tarp was only was because the spring, but the underside, it was totally spits because that side, since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty. No, that's wrong. Actually, one side being clean is pretty strange if you think about it. Yeah, bitch. Because the blood wasn't dry before the body got blown up, right? Yakuya said it himself. Not to touch it, or you might get some on you. If you put a tarp on a body in that state, it absolutely would have gotten blood on it. Well, maybe the culprit washed it, so nobody would know they'd used it. Well, they would have washed the other side, too. If they had, they would have washed both sides. Just washing the one side wouldn't hide anything. Oh! Yeah, true. Uh -huh. More than that, 
What if the very blood we saw on the body was meant as a kind of camouflage? What? The blood was camouflage? What if, after the killer used the tarp to avoid the sprinklers... Gasp! They then covered the body in blood that didn't belong to the victim. Oh, maybe like, uh, yeah. You mean someone else's blood? Where would they get something like that? The chickens did it! I know! They could have grabbed some of the blood packs from the nurse's office! You know, that's actually using your noggin. It's not the right answer here, I feel, but that's actually using your noggin. That's what Hifumi did, right? When he pretended to be dead? No. That's not what happened this time. The killer got the blood from right there in the garden. Good good for you, Hero. You actually use, use your brain. You brought from right there in the garden, right? Which must mean... Chickens! I got it. That's Give how the chickens the come to play. Chicken blood? What? Chicken blood? So now, now we're gonna have a trial. Check the chicken coop before the murder. There were five chickens. Oh man, now we're gonna have a trial for the chicken. We, we had to bring the chicken killer to justice. I guess even though the chicken killer is probably the you know the same one and the same, but you know. So that means whoever gets executed, if there is someone that gets executed, should get it super hard. Like dropping a bus on them. But after the murder, there were only four. So you're saying someone killed a chicken and then covered the body with its blood? Makes sense. I hadn't considered that before, but yeah. Good job, Asani. Man, that's messed up. Yeah, poor chicken. What did the chicken do to you? Killing a living thing just to do something like that is awful. They should have at least eaten Yeah. It. I wonder if the killer had to get the blood from the scene so they wouldn't be spotted walking around. No, I, di I disagree, sir. There should That chicken was part of the community, and we should treat it as a member of said community. Justice, hashtag justice for chicken. Anyway, there's no denying that a chicken went missing, which provides a basis for my theory. <laughs> Perhaps, but even so, there's one thing that still doesn't make sense. You said the culprit used the tarp to avoid the water and then covered the body in blood, right? Yeah, why wouldn't you just... You know. But if that's the case, then the blood should have soaked into the ground around the body. Yeah. But that's not what we saw. Only the victim's clothing had blood on it. Could have used a tiny bit of blood, I guess, but... The ground was completely clean. I have to agree. That certainly is strange. Maybe they didn't apply the blood at the scene. Maybe they covered the coat in blood beforehand. They covered it beforehand? When you discovered the body, was it wearing the coat like you normally would? Um, I think so. Wait, no. The head was through the neck hole, but the arms weren't in the sleeves. I didn't think anything of that. I thought maybe it was just like ripped or something. Then that settles it. Sorry, I'm having a tough time keeping up. What settles what? Here's what happened. The murder took place before the sprinklers went off. But the body didn't get wet because the killer covered it with the tarp. Then, later, at the same time the killer was gathering up the tarp, they pulled the coat over the body, the coat they'd already covered in blood. This series of cover-ups was meant to disguise the actual time the murder occurred. They wanted us to think the murder happened sometime after the sprinklers had gone off, at 7.30. If that's actually what took place, it certainly becomes possible that the murder happened earlier. But to pull all that off, wouldn't they have had to go back to the garden after the sprinklers turned off? That actually wouldn't have been all that difficult. Huh? They already had the coat ready, so they just had to grab the tarp and pull the coat over the body. They'd be done in no time. Maybe, but still. Hina, after you met up with Makoto in the dining hall, did you two stay together from that point on? I wish. 
Oh, no. I headed off to the gym, and Makoto didn't show up till later. Then he had plenty of time to spare, wouldn't you say? I'm gonna skull fuck you. That's not... Don't bother saying it's not possible. I must admit, Kyoko's reasoning is sound. Makoto's alibi is inadequate. Die. And suspicion falls back on me again. You know, if, if I was super salty, I would just say, You know what? I saw you in my fucking room last night after some masked maniac tried to stab me. So fuck you, cunt. Why is Kyoko trying to enchant me? I don't understand. This guy's dead body has been added to the truth bullet section. Really? Okay. Well then, it looks like we're back to square one. Makoto's alibi is no good, so once again, our suspects are him and Kyoko. Point the finger at her, I don't even care at this point. For serious, man? Which one of them did it? Hey, why don't we let luck decide? Let's flip a coin. 50-50 odds. And, uh, well... Oh! See? Pretty good idea, right? Wrong. No, not that. I just remembered something super serious. Super serious. Well, don't just stand there. Out with it. You know that knife we found all black and burnt? The one we found stuck in the body before it exploded, right? According to the Monokuma file, the knife went all the way through, from front to back. It's a hell of a knife. So, what about it? I'm pretty sure I'd seen that knife somewhere before. That's what I thought when I first saw it. I just remembered. I'm being framed! Listen, more important. Now that we have the knife, what are we going to do with it? We can't let Toko keep it, that's for sure. We don't know what she might do. I don't want it anyway. Hmm, so what to do? Why don't you hang on to it, Makoto? Ah! See! Frame me! Frame me! Oh, but, oh look, Makoto had the knife. Ah, ah. It was him all along. Oh, you, you can't die. You're looking to get out of here. Huh? Me? No, no, I don't actually think that. Although it could be possible. Oh. It's the knife we gave to Makoto? You don't seem surprised. You must have noticed earlier. It, yeah. Then why did you hide that fact? It's not that I hid it. It's just... I couldn't be sure of what actually happened last night. I thought maybe I really did kill her. Suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. You know, now that I think about it, that picture didn't have nails. So, yeah, I think, I think we, I think we, yeah. The knife we found stuck in the body came from Makoto. Now I'm totally convinced he did it. 12,000% convinced. Sitting up till now, I should be able to make it clear. I have to prove that I didn't murder anyone. I'm not the killer. Okay, how am I gonna do that this time? Jesus Christ, you're not playing around. The knife we found lodged in the dead body. It's the same one we gave to Makoto. It really is, isn't it? I was afraid of that. If he did have that knife before, then that seals it. Makoto did it. Just because I had the knife once, that automatically makes me the killer? Well, getting stabbed is what killed her, right? So there's no question. You took that knife of yours and killed her with it. Stab, what stab. A horrible man you are, Makoto. Um, hmm. We finally established that the coat was put on the body after the tarp was removed. This means when the knife was thrust through the coat into the body. The knife we found lodged in the dead body. It's the same one we gave to Makoto. Uh. It really is, isn't it? I was afraid of that. If he did have yeah, that that's, knife that's kind of what I was thinking. Then that seals it. Makoto oh, did what am I it? shooting? <laughs> Just because I had the knife once, that automatically makes me... Well, getting stabbed is what killed her. No, that's wrong. I'm gonna fight for my life here. Yep, Wait, we nailed it. Hold on. 
The stab wound isn't what killed Mukuro. That should be clear from the description of the cover-up we just heard. Lies! We never talked about what killed her! No, don't you remember? <laughs> Lies! The killer covered the dead body with the tarp, and then put the bloody coat on it, right? In other words, the victim never wore that blood-stained coat until after they were dead. Okay, fine. So what? So, when we discovered the body, the knife had been thrust through the coat along with the body. Meaning, if she wasn't stabbed until the coat was put on, and she was already dead at that point. Yeah, that, that yeah, that, I think what we were talking about earlier, I think that's I think that's our ultimate uh, proof. Yeah. Obviously, the stab wound isn't what killed her. Maybe you stabbed her twice. Once to kill her and once to cover it up. The victim was stabbed twice in the same spot? No, there's no way that's possible. The exact condition of the body was written down for everyone to see. Uh, wait, what? It's gotta be the monochrome profile. Yeah. Yeah, there, there we go. I got it. The monochrome file clearly states that there was only one. <laughs> I forgot that the monochrome file actually said how they died. Oh yeah, it sure did. I totally forgot about that. Then the knife was just another piece of camouflage set up by the true killer. Which was Kyoko! They probably stabbed her to draw attention away from what actually killed her. Exploding Whee! the body afterward was probably meant to do the same thing. The explosion severely damaged the body, making it impossible to know what really killed her. It was all the killer's attempt to destroy all evidence of their crime. So they wanted us to notice the stab wound and then detonated the body afterward. They meant for us to latch onto the knife as the cause of death, then destroy any evidence proving otherwise. Oh, hey, I have a question. It kind of goes back to the beginning, but what's the deal with that explosion anyway? Why'd the body just blow up all of a sudden like that? If you bothered to put that lump of gray matter between your ears to use, you'd know the answer. That's Bean. Well, if you're so smart, just tell me. I'll tell you. I bet some unknown quantum particle caused an atomic level spontaneous combustion. Okay, let's give Hero his milk and cookies and let's tuck him in the bed. He's, he's clearly overused his brain today. I might be dumb, but even I'm not dumb enough to believe that. Burned. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell her or we won't make any headway on this. There's only one explanation I can think of for the explosion. Uh, what? <laughs> um, am I just supposed to pick the, the, the fragments? Uh, yeah. I got it! After the explosion, yeah. we found a tiny fragment of something on the ground near the body, right? That fragment reveals the cause of the explosion. Huh? You know, I feel like I've seen something like it somewhere before. That's only natural. Because, of course, we saw the same thing when we dismantled Monokuma. Jesus, how are you? need to bend over more often. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. It's part of a bomb. And look at Byakuya back there. He's being fucking suspicious as fuck. Oh! Then the explosion was because of the Monokuma bomb. Anyway, the culprit's motive is becoming more and more obvious by the minute. Well, look, really, if it was a bomb, it was much more bomb. It should, it's more like an incendiary bomb than anything. 
They wanted the knife oh, wound to look like oh. the fatal injury so that we'd suspect Makoto. Yeah. And the only one who would benefit from that is the only other possible suspect. You, Kyoko. <laughs> Byakuya Togami, Ace Attorney. Hold on a second, Byakuya. No, shut up! No, let, 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 let him do this thing. No, no, it's fine. What's the problem? Well, I just feel like we need to think this through. We still don't know what actually killed the victim. No, you know what? Just let this right out. I don't even, I don't even care. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be an unreasonable, stubborn bitch about this. That's true. It's definitely bugging me. What really killed her? Fine. I have no problem with that. Let us continue the debate. It won't change the facts of the case regardless. She tried to sink me. Because if these idiots would have been like, yep, yep, we're going to call for a vote right now. We need to determine what ultimately killed the victim. I need to concentrate. <clears throat> okay. This is probably when we're at the flashback something. Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined, correct? The explosion didn't kill her for sure. I guess. Well, yeah. She was already totally dead when that she happened. She was totally dead. And it wasn't because of the knife, right? And then there's only one other thing. Oh, yeah. Um, according to the Monokuma file, that's gotta be it. There was evidence that showed she was hit on the back of her head. And more than that, uh. the victim had suffered countless wounds across her entire body. Um. I'm not sure what I use it here. The knife was a cover up, and all the other wounds on her body weren't fresh. Which only leaves the. Um. So, wait, what am I contradicting here? Then, shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined, correct? The explosion didn't kill her for sure. Blow yes. the back of the head, okay. Well, yeah, she was already totally dead. And it wasn't because Okay, of I'll, the I'll, I'll try right? that. And then there's only one other thing. Oh, yeah. Um, according to the Monokuma file, that's gotta be it. There was evidence that showed she was hit on the back of her head. And more than that, the victim had suffered countless wounds across her entire body. There's a cover-up. It's only a uh -huh. Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined. There we go. Good call. No, I really wasn't sure on that one, but after reading it like twice, it made sense. Mufuro died because of the blow to the back of the head she suffered. Um, can we even be sure of that? What about the wounds all over the rest of her body? They didn't have anything well, uh, to do with well, it? Well, okay. Um, at this point, they would think, okay, it was the blow to the back of the head. They might not know that... Well... The Monokuma file makes it clear that those weren't fresh wounds. Oh yeah, good point. If they were old, I guess they don't really matter. Okay, then we're safe in assuming the blow to the back of her head is what killed her. Well, as far as we know. But then, what was the murder weapon? The Monokuma file says she was hit with a blunt object about as thick as a metal pipe. Oh, I bet it was the pickaxe! <sighs> How is that even possible? If you hit someone with that, it'd cave their skull in completely. Well, maybe they held it the other way and hit her with the handle. I mean, that's possible, but... Uh... No way! The balance would be all off. You wouldn't be able to swing it with yeah, that kind of power. Yeah, that'd be extremely weird. I mean, not impossible, but extremely weird. I wouldn't mind testing it on you if you want. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> no thanks. I bet you just hit me with the metal end and call it an accident. I'd love to scoop out that nasty brain of yours, throw it on the ground, and, and spit on Jesus, it. Jesus, girl, you got problems. <laughs> I feel the same way. Looks like we're on the same page this time. Seriously? Uh. We want to figure out what killed her, right? It just so happens we already know. We already know? 
I knew we could count on you, Master. So what was it? Go ahead and tell them, Makoto. Surely you've deduced the real murder weapon? The real murder weapon. Probably the titanium arrows. Probably. I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, it, it's kind of weird to use to use that, but I mean, whatever. I got it. Uh, they, they are titanium. Mukuro was hit in the back of the head with something, and that's what killed him. It's really weird to make arrows out of titanium, like all the way through, not just the, the arrowhead. And that something was the titanium arrow we found in the locker in the dojo. An arrow? That's what the culprit attacked Mukuro with? Indeed. There's no doubt about oh, there's, it. Oh, there's doubt. I mean, that just happened to be the one metal object we found, but whatever. Are you sure? That sounds... kind of weird. It does sound kind of weird. Hey! How dare you backtalk, Master! You have no right! Ugh, you need a pile driver. I'm not backtalking anything. I'm just saying what I think. I don't blame Hina for doubting it, because there's one more thing about that weapon. One more secret. Um... <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. The titanium arrow. It was in the dojo locker, right? Mm -hmm. I have no doubt that was the murder weapon. Are you sure? Uh. You don't sound convinced. What's the problem? Well, because in the Monokuma file, it said the weapon must have been about as thick as a metal pipe, right? Yeah, it doesn't seem it thick enough. It seems like an arrow would just be too thin. Talking back to Master! You have no right! Uh, if it was just t that titanium arrow, it would have been, it wouldn't be nearly thick enough. Okay, yeah. So, th th okay, I, I see how it was. There was the, the duct tape. Yeah, bound all the, the the arrows together and then hit him with that. Yeah, yeah. That. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. Thinking too. Yeah, I had to bundle them, which is why they used the titanium arrow. It was in the doge. I have no doubt that was the murder. Are you sure? You don't sound convinced. What's the problem? Well, because it said the weapon must have been about as thick. It seems like an arrow would just be too... No, it's wrong. I was wondering how that figured in. I thought maybe the tape was used to bind something, but... I'm thinking maybe it was something in the body. You're but, right. Yeah. Just the one arrow would have been too weak. That's why the killer used another weapon. Yeah. Another weapon? Inside the dojo locker, we also found a balled up wad of duct tape. The killer probably uses duct tape to bind multiple arrows together. Bundling them together using the duct tape would easily create a single weapon as thick as a pipe. And that's exactly what the killer did. It's similar to Aesop's fable about the bundle of sticks. Oh, she sounds so different. You sound so nice like this. One stick is weak. But put them together, and they become strong. It's meant to teach cooperation. You know, if you always talk like that, you'd be so so much better. Damn, that's harsh. How is it harsh? Are you even listening? When it comes to the book, she's like, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a cool girl. Anyway, that explains the murder weapon. As for who the culprit is that stashed the weapon in the dojo locker, it was you, Kyoko. I've never been to the dojo. Oh, oh, oh. oh no. You absolutely have. We founded it. How can you say that with such confidence? Because we have proof, of course. Don't we, Makoto? Uh, oh, um... Hmm? What's the matter? Surely you don't intend to protect a murderer. Uh-oh! You know what will happen if you do, don't you? If you cover for the culprit, there's only one thing that can lead to. The death of us all, remember? Uh, of course I remember. Then show us. Show everyone the evidence that proves Kyoko went to the dojo. I have evidence? It was like Kyoko went to the dojo. Why is it kicking that dojo locker? Oh shit! Hmm. 
you know, you could probably argue that maybe, you know, you just pick something else that's wrong or refuse the answer or whatever. But it's probably just going to take away life or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Th th this one, this one's definitely simple. It's just like, oh, it's getting heated. I got it. The one thing that proves Kyoko was in the dojo is right here. The key to the dojo locker. And how does that prove anything? Because I found it in your room. It was in my room? Don't bother trying to play dumb. That key is just the final piece of the puzzle. I mean, even then, that doesn't necessarily prove anything. I could have put it there. But, yeah. Your non-existent alibi, your clear motive, your attempts to frame Makoto for the crime. That's all pretty suspicious. This all proves that you are the true culprit. You can't explain this away, so just give up. Hold on a second. Not this again. You really are dead set on defending her, aren't Even you? Even though she was ready to deep six me. No, it's not that I want to defend her. It's just, there's one more thing I need to ask her. Kyoko, I want you to tell me something. Last night, you were in my room, weren't you? Why? What were you doing there? That's what I need to know. I was just protecting you. What? Yeah, that that was pretty obvious. And does that mean she She knew I was being attacked. And she came to my rescue. Could that be when which would mean that that Kyoko she killed someone for me? No, that's pretty obvious at this point. That's enough. The time for idle chatter is over. A verdict is close at hand. Wait. I'm warning you. Don't make this mistake. I'm not the killer. I knew you were stubborn, but this is just getting ridiculous. Really? But you should know better than anyone I didn't do it. Oh, really? Can you tell me I'm wrong? I should know. Mm -hmm. What? Yaki, you should know better than anyone? That's curious. What does that mean? Am I forgetting something here? Probably. When the body was found. Uh -huh. Those words you just spoke. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. I'm not the killer. You should understand that more than anyone here. Yakuya, what are you hiding? Master would never hide something from me! There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Is that what you're saying? You stated a theory earlier. You said I hid the evidence of my crime in the dojo locker, and then left the locker key in my own room, correct? But... Could I really have done that? Uh... Wait, Kyoko gave her room... Uh, that's true. Kyoko gave her room key to Byakuya, right? Which would mean... Those words you just spoke. Then what again... Exactly what well, I said. then again... Uh... I'm not the killer. Okay, I, I was gonna say, wait a minute, she broke, she was managed you to broke into my room. That more than anyone here. She could have broken into her own room, but then again, like, hiding? oh, dude probably Master, broke into my room, and then she just happened to follow in. There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Is that what you're okay, saying? this is when I have to remember something, so I have to go through this you again, sorry. You stated a theory earlier. You said I hid the evidence of my crime and then left the locker key in my own room, correct? But... Could I really have done that? Yeah, okay, I gotta save I gotta save that one. Those words you just Exactly I'm not, but you should understand that more than Yakuya. Master would never There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Is that what you're you stated a theory earlier. You said I hid that and then left the locker key in my own room. Correct? Yeah. But yeah, that, that that's what I'm could thinking I really too. Have done that? Okay, we've got this, we got this. Those words I think. Just... Exactly. I'm not, but you should understand. Yakuya. Master would never hide something from me. There's proof that you aren't the culprit. 
Yep. Nailed it. <clears throat> We're getting good at this. Although you've you've been like admittedly better. Right, Kyoko wouldn't have been able to get into her room. Huh? Why not? Because she had given her room key to Byakuya. I see. So that's what you meant. And if I had the key to your room, then obviously I had no way of getting in. Without my room key, I couldn't have possibly put the locker key in there myself. Well, to say possibly, or not, uh, couldn't have possibly is a little off. Man, these people have no imagination, it seems. Am I wrong? It would appear not. Then you're finally starting to understand. No, oh, that's not actually true. There was a clear contradiction in what Kyoko told us. An obvious lie. Was there? I missed that. But this... This just isn't like her. Try and save herself with such a desperate lie. Hmm. What did I miss? Okay, wait, 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 wait. <clears throat> if I had the key to your room, then obviously I had no way of getting in. Without my room key, I couldn't have possibly put the locker key in there myself. Uh. Okay. This is. Hmm. But you know, if I do that, I'm going to, have to do this all over again. What's the, what's the contradiction? I don't think I couldn't have possibly put the locker key in there myself. Does she really feel that threatened? Because she's the killer? Or is this something else? Was there some deeper meaning hidden than what Kyoko said earlier? If you vote for me and I die here, the mystery of this school will stay hidden forever. Which is why I can't let that happen. This is a trap. The mastermind is laid for us. Mastermind's trap. Mastermind is trying to trap Kyoko? But what if that's not really true? What can I do? What should I do? What should I... The mastermind's trap? The victim was Mukuro. And Kyoko killed her? What does Kyoko really know? What am I supposed to do? Kyoko's lie. I'm the only one who knows it's a lie. How do I know it's a lie? I, I, it's been a while, so I'm, I'm clearly forgetting something. I'm the only one who can expose it. But who can I trust? What am I supposed to do? So this is interesting. Uh, as Asai pointed out, and I'm keen to agree, this, prob this is probably where paths diverge. Mastermind's trap. You spend all your time trying to avoid danger. You'll never move forward. We know the danger. But if at risk means solving the mystery, we have no choice. Am I wrong? What do I do? I have to decide right he here and now whether or not to expose Kyoko's lie. Oh, boys and girls, oh shit! Oh yeah, that's right, that's right, oh shit. Okay. I'm not going to be keen on doing this whole thing again, but I'll come back and do the other one later. We're going to let it go. Made my decision. I have to believe in Kyoko. There's no way she would kill somebody. Well, sure, there is a way, but you know. There has to be some secret here. Something that has to do with Mastermind's trap that Kyoko mentioned. Well, does no one have a rebuttal? Have you decided to accept her assertion as fact? I see. So 
so you still refuse to accept it. Yeah, man, that, that was that was the thing I, I forgot. Like, oh, I forgot about that. What is that we're talking about? Well, everybody here watching this is probably a lot smarter. Than me. Well, okay, maybe smarter too, but certainly has a better memory than me. And Sai is just pointing out to me how she could have done it. Like, yeah, yeah, I know now. I suppose we have to admit that Kyoko didn't put the locker key in her room, that it was someone else. But who else could it have been? I mean, Byakuya had a room key, right? You! What are you trying to imply? But of course, I have an alibi. From nighttime on, I was with you guys the entire time. Yeah. I couldn't possibly have killed anyone, or put the key in Kyoko's room. Well, someone had to put the key in there. There's only one other possibility I can think of. Someone could have had the key on them, then once they arrived at the scene, pretended to find it there. What? Oh, jeez! It, it had to be Makoto. Oh my god! Why am I doing this? I don't see any other option. Wait a second! You've got it all wrong! Let's think about it one more time! There's gotta be a hidden side to this case! Huh? A hidden side? First of all, there's something off about this entire trial. You all see it, don't you? Uh oh. The <laughs> bear's like, oh, he's not partying right now. Mukuro, who we didn't even know existed, suddenly shows up dead. And then we're thrown into a trial. And Kyoko even said, it's a trap the mastermind set for us. So that's why this has to be. Okay, time's up! Oh shit, it's up, bear! I'm gonna kick you in your stupid head! Huh? Time's up! Class trial's all over! Everyone can stop talking now! <laughs> he don't like this talk. He don't like our kind around her. What? Time's up? What do you mean, time's up? There's no time's up. Since when have He's we- He's like, oh no. It's because you were late! So we had to push back the start time. So then it's time for voting time, okay? Everyone, please vote using the lever in front of you. Voting time? Oh, it's just gonna be like that, huh? Hey, I aced it. Go me, I'm getting good at this. Now, who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? Hey, hold on! What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Oh shit! What? You think I'm the killer? <sighs> Sorry, man. Sorry. <laughs> it's all your fault. <laughs> everyone, you're wrong. You got it all wrong. I didn't do it. Yes, indeed. Good job, everyone. Good job? Yep. Yeah, they got it right. No, I know that's not true. None of this makes any sense. The whole trial doesn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense! Shing. It's the same as always. It's just like all the other class trials. And I'm gonna end it the same way. Thrills, chills, kills! It's time for your heart pounding, positively thrilling punishment. Wait, why do I. Kyoko! I don't expect you to forgive me. I know this is all my fault. Kyoko? Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! Makoto has been found guilty. Time for the punishment.
stupid bear. Oh, hello. Good timing. <laughs> he looks a little lost. Oh man, this is gonna hurt when I hit land on my head. What's that? Uh, um, yeah, it had to be. Th this is alter ego. Yeah. Alter ego. It's just some stupid virus with that stupid guy. Yeah. He must have planned it when he invaded my network. Give it all to hell! I don't believe this. It would seem. Seems you finally made a miscalculation. Hm. No, you miscalculated from the very beginning. What the heck? What was, what was that? In other words, what I'm saying is you shouldn't have underestimated us. Why are you talking like you've already won? I barely felt a thing. It was a pinch, an itch. The stupid virus is gone now. Got it? And so is Makoto. Maybe I didn't get to smash him flat. But you're never going to see him again. Yeah! Waste away in a garbage germ pit. Anyway, that's an even better special punishment. <laughs> that's still not enough. I'm still not satisfied. I'm still going to bring despair to the rest of you. Bring despair to the entire world! <laughs> uh, um. Is he gone? <laughs> hey, Kyoko, what's the meaning of all this? So what the hell is going on? Calm down. It's okay. We're not the ones being trapped this time. Huh? huh? In other words. Now it's the mastermind that's ensnared. What did you say? What are you talking about? So... You understand soon enough. Very soon indeed. The massive high school tower is over all the other buildings in this bustling urban era. Or area. What the fuck? Like the school stands at the center of the entire world. What the shit? Opus Peak Academy. It brings in top students from every field imaginable. A government funded school of privilege. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. Hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which means Hope's Peak is a pretty fitting name. Or which makes, whatever, you know what I mean. There are two things you need to attend this school. One, you have to already be attending high school. Two, you have to be the very best at what you do. No ordinary student can enroll here. The only way in is if you're scouted by the, if you're scouted by the school itself. They stand there at the gate of the ultimate school filled with the ultimate students. It was me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? Where am I? I woke up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body felt heavy. It wouldn't be weird for me to zonk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but... What was I doing asleep here just now? It wasn't any classroom I'd ever been in before. What the heck is going on? Gah. Oh, this is... different. Okay. Finally. I can finally feel my mind and body start to come back together again. And then... I was awake. Or... Was this just another dream? A dream... inside a hopeless nightmare? No. This isn't a dream. I can tell, because the stench invading my nostrils was too powerful for a dream. What an awful smell. I was in a vast, dark cavern, with the barest hint of light seeping in. Trash was piled high all across the area. I smoked like some kind of underground garbage pit. Man, wouldn't it have hurt, really hurt when I landed? A heck of a situation to find myself in. But that was just the beginning of my problems. Was I going to be stuck in there until I wasted away and died? No, I can't let that happen. Not after what my good friend went through to save me. 
really? Uh, I remember all too well what had happened. Oh yeah, well that 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 friend saved me. Thank you, Alter Ego. You're a friend. Alter Ego saved me. He used the last little bit of his strength to do it. Thanks, Alter Ego. You're a pal. I can't give up now. For myself and for my friend. Because fuck everybody else. Jesus Christ. You people voted me out. Fuck you. And with that, my pursuit of survival began. First up was to look was starting to look for a way out. Well, um I guess this is where we should cut off. Hmm. I forgot how to save. Okay. Don't save over that. Let's start making separate saves down here. Alright. Yeah. Okay, um, since I, I, I guess that trial's over, I, I guess we'll call it quits here. Um... Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure I'll be recording more parts soon because now, now we're in the thick of it. And I need to remember to make a separate video for a little bonus footage later. But all in good time. Right. Uh, check what now? Sorry, I'm waiting on a response from, from him. Check what now? There's going to be a delay until he hears it. Check if the stage is actually separate. Oh. It should be. Whoops. Whoops. Wrong thing. Yep. It's, it's separate. I'll just... Um... Save from down here from now on, I guess. Yeah, it's a good thing to check that anyway, so you're right. Okay. Right. We'll leave it there. Maybe I'll record another part before I go to bed. Um, Alright, guys. Uh, Thanks for watching. We're in the thick of it now. And I got some stuff to do. So, catch you later.